As always, we've got a lot going on, especially today. We've got our regular nine o'clock worship service. And then we have a lot of guests, family and friends that are looking forward to their loved ones graduating. Our second service is the University Baccalaureate. We're so glad that all of you chose to worship with us today. Also wanna give you a heads up for next week. We're starting our brand new summer sermon series. We're gonna be going through the book of John and looking at a lot of characters that we all would recognize. It's entitled Imperfect Believers. We hope to see you next week. Summer is here and our youth ministries department has a lot of things planned for our youth. Here is Pastor Jonathan Osorio and one of his leaders to share lots of things that are going on in the youth department this summer. Hey! Hey! Oh, okay, what time is it? It's summer time. Oh man, the best man, time. I love, I, I don't know about you, man. What's one thing you love about summer, Ari? I can't choose between one. Probably swimming and sleeping. Swimming and sleeping. Yeah. Man, I love, I love the sound of that too, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, one thing I love about summer is I love, I love to sleep. Don't get me wrong, I love to sleep. <laughs> and the other thing I love to do is I love to go to the beach and just catch the That's waves. The yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this summer we have a lot of things packed out, jam packed from June to July to August. You can get connected by yes. finding us at lluc.org slash regen. regen. You don't want to miss it. Ding. You just got to love the energy of youth and the youth pastor. They've got a lot of great things planned for this summer. Another thing we want to give you a heads up, a lot of you have expressed your appreciation for the media you experience each and every week here at the Loma Linda University Church. Well, we could use your help. We need volunteers. Experience isn't required. We're happy to train. If you're interested to be involved to volunteer in this important ministry, please go to the, our website, LOUC.org, and at the very top, you'll see the word serve, and you'll see a form you can fill out there. We'd love to have your help. A special thank you to Pastor Shauna and all of the volunteers that helped make Vacation Bible School possible this year. Here is some footage of everything that took place this week. As you can see, they had lots of fun, and not only did they have fun, but the most important thing is they learned so much about their relationship with Jesus. We want to thank again all of the youth for helping out, all of the volunteers, and again, Pastor Shauna and her ministry. That's right. Well, that's our announcements for today. For more information, check the website, the bulletin, or of course, we always love to see you at the UConnect Center in the foyer. Happy Sabbath, everyone.
please remain standing for the invocation. Gentlemen, please take off your tams and your mortarboards. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on this way, we come to you this morning with a heart overflowing with gratitude and joy and with the spirit of thanksgiving for what you have done in those who stand before us. When they were weary, you put them up on eagle's wings and kept moving them forward. When only you witnessed their silent tears, you drew them to you, comforted them, and encouraged them. And now, Lord, here they stand. And we thank you for the families for, who cheered them along, and many of them weary for their own sacrifice to get them to this point and to the faculty who not only taught them skills, but taught them to recognize your voice and to follow your leadings. And to our administrators of our schools and of this institution, to whom you have given wisdom to lead, we thank you for all. And in this service, we look forward to hearing your voice again in the stories and the experiences of our students and in the inspiring words of Pastor Roberts. Keep us forever in your way, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Graduates, on behalf of our entire church, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to you, your family, and your friends. We firmly believe that God brought you to this institution to prepare you for the next phase of your life's journey. So we're excited to celebrate that with you here today. During your years here, many of you have become an integral part of this community. And so while we are looking forward to what God has in store for you, we're also a little sad to see you go. But we want you to know that wherever life's journey may take you, you always have a home here at the Loma Linda University Church. We also want to take a moment to recognize our brass conductor, our sanctuary brass conductor, Virgil Nielsen. Although he'll be con continuing on as a member of the brass, today is his final Sabbath as the conductor. We want to thank him so much for his many, many years of service. <laughs> Through his leadership, the Sanctuary Brass has inspired us to worship, has has become a fixture at graduations, and has become a discipling community. So Virgil, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your leadership and your dedicated service. Amen. Dr. Carter. It is my distinct honor on behalf of Loma Linn University Health, its six hospitals, its practice plans, its clinics, various lines of services, and certainly on behalf of eight wonderful schools at Loma Linn University. We welcome you to this health science complex. This weekend is the second and final graduation weekend in 2019. Three weeks ago, medicine and pharmacy and dentistry, and today, nursing, behavior health, religion, public health, allied health, are presenting students in total of about 1,500, and these are the brightest and the most beautiful representatives of that group. One of the great privileges and delights of this campus is that from any given quarter, we have more than 50 different religious denominations and all the world religions represented in the diversity of our students. That diversity has brought such delight and such fulfillment of spirituality. And so to all of you, no matter what your religious background, we thank you for being here and we pray that this worship service, this dedication to our students is meaningful. God bless you.
I thought this morning I would share briefly how Loma Linda became home to my wife, Andrea, and I. I remember the day quite well. I was nearing the end of my second year of medical school, and I joined Andrea for lunch at the student cafeteria. We got our food, and being the introverted couple that we are, we headed to a quiet spot outside to sit and enjoy our lunch. We quickly found ourselves lost in our food, sharing how our mornings had gone. We were jolted from our conversation by the honk of a horn and a voice bellowing from the window of a passing truck, hey there, lovebirds. We both looked up to see Dr. Nava, smiling and waving as he drove past us. As simple as this moment was, I, ca I can still remember all the details for one reason. This was the first time that I truly fe felt at home while at on the university campus. You see, I grew up in a small town in Canada, and experiences like the one I just described were not uncommon. Being that Andrew and I were both well known in our community, I actually became so accustomed to unplanned encounters that I assumed that this was normal. After moving to Loma Linda, I realized very quickly that this was not home and how lonely one could feel while being surrounded by so many people. During the first couple years on campus, we met amazing people who generously invited Andrew and I into their homes. People like Jim and Kathy McMillan and Jim Weller and Ginger Kettingweller. The hours that we shared over meals and in conversation were sacred. However, after leaving the warmth of these homes, the campus still felt very lonely. That afternoon, while eating our lunch outside the cafeteria, Dr. Nava, probably without realizing it, changed how I felt on this campus. He transformed this campus into home. Loma Linda has become a very special place for Andrea and I, and I never cease to be amazed by the quantity of beautiful, generous, Christ-like individuals that fill this campus. Dr. Lamberton and Dr. Hayton, my experiences in medical school have been so much richer because of you. Dr. Yi and Dr. Gang, your thoughtfulness and desire for Jesus to be relevant and applicable to this world have inspired me. Dr. Winslow and Mary Jane, the friendship, wisdom, and opportunities that you've freely shared with me will not be forgotten. And Barb and Gil Hernandez, your generosity and kindness knows no bounds. I'd be amiss if I did not also mention our Pine Knoll family, as well as the many couples and hosts who we met throughout the Junior Medical Auxiliary. These monthly gatherings have kept us from becoming hopelessly introverted and introduced us to lifelong friends like Ruth and Charles Randolph. These are just a few of the many amazing people on this campus who've demonstrated to Andrea and I, as well as so many other students, that this campus is unique. That on this campus, there are numerous people who daily seek to continue the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus Christ. That this campus, though far removed from many of our homes, has many people who are working to make it home to us. Hi, welcome everybody. <clears throat> Luke 12, 7, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. My name is Peter Bastian, and I don't think I make God work as hard to count all the hairs on my head as all, all of you guys. But that's a good thing, because it's given him a lot more time to dote on me and to love me through the wonderful people here at Loma Linda, whether it be through the Preventive Medicine Residency or the School of Public Health. <clears throat> My specialty is preventive medicine, and I work over at the Center for Health Promotion, and my passion has to do with the following statistic. $160 million, no, people. Does anybody know what that is? That's the number of people with a disease of obesity in the United States. I spend a lot of time counting the hairs, and what I mean by that, the different genetic and social determinants that cause the obesity in my patients. Each patient has a different hairdo and some don't have any hair at all, and I have to figure out how it fell off. All of this might seem overwhelming when you think about doing this on a population-based scale. So here's another statistic, 3,000. That's the amount of miles from the East Coast to the West. When I lived in Massachusetts on the East Coast three years ago, I was 50 pounds heavier, going towards diabetes, and proud of a not-so-proud record. I was known as the Coupon King I was the guy that would go through the McDonald's drive through and took advantage of that little sign that says, we accept competitors' coupons. So I would use my Wendy's and Burger King 
and I felt like I was the king, but I was tired of winning. And so, even during those dark times, though, God was not tired of loving me. He brought me my beautiful wife from 3,000 miles away from Ecuador. And then very shortly after we had settled in in Massachusetts, he told us to come 3,000 miles away to Loma Linda, the land where men are made whole. <clears throat> and boy, what a hair transplant it was. <laughs> like watching Holder Crooks turn from a desert to a green oasis in the middle of the winter, watching Blue Mountain and in all its glory of purple flowers. Now, I don't like the word blue zone, and that's Dan Buettner's thing, and you know, we are, though, probably the biggest blue zone here. Um, but that aside, living inside of the emerald, or not emerald, the Sapphire City, the blue Sapphire City has its perks, but one of them is not to get too comfortable here. As we go out and we treat our populations and our patients, remember whether they're 3,000 miles away or half a world away or just next door in San Bernardino, we have to move ourselves, and sometimes that's out of our own comfort zone. But as you do that, here's one more statistic. Two, just two words, say thank you to the people that have doted on you, that have helped count your hairs, that have helped seen you in your good hair days and your bad hair days through this big process. And if you remember that, then you'll be able to count the hairs better on your patients. And as you do it, move a couple of them aside so that they can see how available it is, a healthy lifestyle, both spiritually and physically. If you do that, you'll be more whole yourself and less afraid of the millions that need your wholeness. Thank you.
everyone. First, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come share my testimony and to thank God for allowing me to see another day to make it here. My name is Stacy Stafford Pena. I am a 24-year-old graduate of Sam Manuel Gateway College in the medical assistant program. Two and a half years ago, I was homeless on the streets, a victim of domestic violence, and I was addicted to drugs. My two kids have been removed from my care by CPS. I was lost and broken and had given up all hopes that I could get out of the life I was living. My brother fought a long and hard battle with addiction, and at 26, it took his life. So to be able to stand up here in front of all you guys and say that I made it is one of my biggest accomplishments. I am a survivor. The road to my recovery has been long with many, many obstacles in my way, from living in a homeless shelter to fighting for my kids. But I have conquered it all, including getting my kids back, which is what I'm most proud of. God is doing amazing things in my life. Loma Linda is a huge part of my story. It started off by getting a job in the medical center as a food service worker, to becoming a full-time student at the Sam Manuel Gateway College. I have received so much love and support throughout my time here at LOU. I'm accepted here, I am not judged here, and I'm told every day to reach for the stars and to never sell myself short. It is here at Loma Linda that I believe I have found myself, found my true passion and my calling in life. I was not sure what my purpose was when I came here, but since starting my medical assistant program, I know patient care is what I'm meant to do. Success is not always the case for people who have been down the same road as me, but God had a better plan for me. Two years ago, I was bound to the streets by my addiction, and on Monday, I will be flying across the world to Africa as a part of a mission trip at Loma Linda University. I have missed out on so much in life, and since coming to LLU, doors have opened up for me in ways I could have never imagined. I would have never thought I could actually be someone that would make a difference in someone's life, but going on these mission trips is exactly what I'm doing, making a difference. I plan to come back and complete my nursing here at LLU, and one day be standing up here again, sharing my story, but as a graduating nurse practitioner. The sky is the limit for me. I want to say a special thank you to Mr. Wild and Dr. Hart for all the encouragement you guys have given me and the love you have shown me. It is something that I will forever be thankful for. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you. What a testimony, Stacy. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Morning, oh, there's like thousands of us here. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Morning, wow, wonderful. My name is Nathan Muneer, and today I stand before you grateful. God has been good to me throughout my journey, in and out of school. But in order to talk about my journey, it is important to reflect on my past. I have grown up here in this church and community for the past 16 years of my life. I stood here on this very stage 11 years ago as I got baptized right behind me by Pastor Rob Moore. Before that, I was an immigrant from Karachi, Pakistan. At the age of seven, my parents made the difficult but necessary decision to uproot our family from Pakistan and make the move to the United States to seek a better life for my sister and I. It was overwhelming and at times, I admit, I wanted to go back to what I had considered my home. But I now know in this very moment standing on the stage before you, that staying here meant a better life for my family and I. I learned to read, to write, and speak English fluently as my third language. I learned the social norms and the customs of this country, all while keeping my identity, my cultural identity, thanks to my parents. I was able to take a scary situation and turn it into one of the best experiences of my life. 
I praise God and my parents and my sister for being the pillars in my life and pushing me to be a better me. I have also been fortunate enough to be involved in and out of my education and also social aspects, such as co-director of outreach over at Lost University, as well as the president of the School of Allied Health Student Association. I have been blessed to I have been best to learn how to be compassionate through my experiences during my clinical rotations, which was a part of, which is a favorite part of mine at the program. The patients I have been lucky enough to attend to have made me in touch with my emotions. Talking to them after their treatments or just listening to them share their personal stories made me realize not to take life for granted. One of the more important values I have learned and I can't live without now is teamwork. No one survives without others to rely on or to seek help from. I want to personally thank my team the best support a person in this kind of situation or program can ask for is my class. So thank you personally to Arsh, to Kevin, to Hatem, Jordan, and David. Without you guys, I don't know if I would have been here. I can honestly say that we have become a family throughout this journey, from the late night study sessions to taking lunches together while we're at clinic. But even outside of that, and the numerous number of friends I have made, I want to thank you all, and my family that is here today, and my LLU family. At times, I felt like the walls were caving in, but you all pushed me to go on. Without you guys, my time here at Loma Linda would have been very different. You guys have been my rock and have pushed me to do better. I have learned so much from you all, and because of all you have to show me, that without a team, no one gets ahead. These are some of the tools that I have learned here at Loma Linda and have molded me into a whole person. This is one of the best things that Loma Linda has to offer. To make man whole goes far beyond just a motto. It has become my way of life. Holistic care is the epitome of healthcare, and I hope to carry, with this, carry this with me forever. But ultimately, I just want to serve and help others just like my mother. My mother, the best nurse that I've ever met, has taught me and continues to teach me the most essential things in life. She has shown me what it means to be steadfast, as well as shown me that by working hard, you reap what you sow. She instilled in me a long time ago a Bible verse that is still close to my heart. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead where you are going, there's neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Whenever I'm tasked with a problem or situation, I think of this verse that my mother has taught me. It changes my outlook on that specific situation, and I approach it with everything I have. My mother has a big heart, and I believe that is also my biggest trait. I've always been told I have a big heart for everyone and a willingness to help anyone in need. I want to be able to pour onto my patients the knowledge that has been given to me by Loma Linda University and also by God. I look forward to applying everything that this institution and my parents and my family has taught me as I further my career. Thank you and God bless.
forgiveness so hard to accept my past surrounds me like a house I can't afford but you say come with me don't live there anymore gentle savior lead me on let your spirit light my way gentle savior lead me on hold me close keep me safe a trusting child would do and say gentle Savior lead me on let your spirit light my way gentle Savior lead me Thank you, Nathan. I've had the privilege to listen to that beautiful voice for the last two and a half years as we would ask him to perform at all of our little events at the School of Nursing. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everyone, and good afternoon. My name is Andre Yanez, and I am a graduate from the School of Nursing um, of 2019. I did graduate last December. I can't believe it has been six months since then. But it is a privilege to be here standing before you uh, in front of all of my family, friends, supporters, my colleagues, faculty this, of this prestigious institution. I finished my nursing program and I cannot believe where I have been and where I am at this point in my life. I work in the surgical trauma ICU in 8100 at the medical center and I have seen many, many things that I wish that God will just lead me forward. Before this journey, after high school, I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do, but I did have a strong foundational background as a very young competitor in the sport of, of football. American football on the gridiron. I was a center and I did everything I could to protect my quarterback. All these injuries from my knee to my shoulder I was exposed to the medical field, anesthesia, nurses, and I did find my passion. My parents, my family, and friends did come from a background within the medical field, so I thought it was a right pursuit where God was leading me. With all these injuries, I did have a scholarship to a school out in the East Coast, but was unfortunate not able to go due to these injuries. But God had another plan in store for me. I decided to work with the help of my parents at an assisted living and gained my bedside experience as a CNA. Working with many residents, I would take care of 20 to 25 for the shift eight hours, and it was gruesome. Bed sores from lack of turning, family wouldn't come visit their loved ones, 
I began to find my calling and my passion in my nursing career. But I had no idea what God had in store. I believed that football was my life. I, I blood, sweat, and tears, and I would go forth and pursue. But I found that even in sports, with your relationships, with family, you're always going to pursue. And that's exactly what I did. I fell in love with caring of others, and I decided I'm going to apply to Loma Linda University. I got that phone call, but was placed on a wait list because of my lack of GPA, only because I decided sports is everything, but I still need to go to microbiology lab, but I'm going to do what I can. <laughs> With the help of one of my cousins, Aaron Yanez, I was able to pass a uh, microbiology with a B, and I was happy for that. <laughs> but like I said, God had another plan in store for me, as we all have a plan in this life and in this world until he comes with the second coming. I believe that we are all made to make a difference and to make man whole. So I just wish as we become alumni tomorrow, enjoy these last moments, and thank you all, and God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kimberly Williams. I am with the School of Behavioral Health, I'm receiving the degree of marital and family therapy. Um, I want to thank God for allowing me to share this space with you. Um, sometimes we don't always know what we need, and I didn't know that I really needed to come here to Loma Linda. One of the greatest things I remember seeing on campus is the, um, the statue of the Good Samaritan. And I thought, I want to be a part of that. I want to be the one to help the person in need. When I arrived here, I didn't realize that I was the person actually in need. My faculty, my classmates, everyone um, helped me. They helped me to understand that I had a voice. They helped me to... Um, to stand for something, to become that person that I wanted to be. Um, and so, excuse me, I'm really nervous. Um, at the end of this journey, I realized that I was that person in need of compassion and patience. Um, and in this journey, I became my most authentic self, offering my voice to help others, um, starting a mentoring program for the first year students, helping them up. We all know that first year can be really hard, you're away from your family. And so offering a helping hand to those students. Um, sorry. Um, and so I just want to say that our human relationships are all about that giving and receiving love from each other. And so today I want to um, challenge you all to become that Good Samaritan. It can be something as simple as holding the door for someone or letting that person in front of you as we all leave to go out of here to eat. Um, <laughs> just in small ways. Um, and that scripture is found in Luke 10 and 30. And at the end of it, Jesus tells the man to go forth and have compassion, um, just like the Good Samaritan. It requires us to put down our offense. It requires us to think of someone other than ourselves. It requires us to sometimes be inconvenienced for the sake and the good of someone else. And so I just encourage you all to go out there today and do those same things. Um, I want to thank my clients, my colleagues, my school, um, and my classmates for making me better in that way. And now I do feel that I am now the Good Samaritan. They have helped me to rise up and become that person. Um, and so I just want to say that um, being here at Loma Linda has truly made me whole, and I'm forever grateful for this time and experience. Thank you guys for sharing with us today. Thank you. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms 27, 1 through 5, from the Today's New International Version Bible. And in the Pew Bibles, you can also find the scripture on pages 824 to 825. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He will keep me, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred heart and will set me high upon a rock. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. About a month ago, the billionaire tech executive and philanthropist Robert F. Smith presented the commencement address at Morehouse College. He told them at that time that to the almost 400 graduates, he would be paying off their entire student loan debt. It would run into the tens of millions of dollars. As you can imagine, there was a moment of stunned silence and then jubilation. Chants of MVP, MVP were heard from the graduating class. Unfortunately, <laughs> Robert Smith couldn't be here today. <laughs> so you got me. <laughs> Hold your applause. I don't have a billion dollars to pay off your student loan debt. If I did, I would. If you want your student loan debt paid off, may, well, never mind. <laughs> but I do have this. I do have a spiritual gem to offer you. To offer you as you stand on the threshold to the new phase in your life. As I try to put myself back into these moments of transition in my own life and Try to think of what you might be feeling. I can imagine that there is, besides the excitement, some sense of uncertainty and fear for what lies out there. The world can be a dark place, scary place, a threatening place. So what can be said at a time like this? Some time ago I read some words that I want to share with you. They were penned by the the theologian, former seminary president, author, pastor, and professor, James Emery White. This is what White writes. Medieval cartographers, that is map makers, sketched the phrase, Ix sunt dragonis, translated, there be dragons, on the edges of their maps. Those three words were used by the medieval cartographer of the famed Lenox Globe from the early 1500s to describe the outer boundaries where knowledge ended and speculation began. After drawing on all of his knowledge, the map maker could only write those three provocative words to convey that these areas were at best unexplored and at worst perilous. Now, there is some difference of opinion among historians and historians of cartography as to how many times that image appeared, but all are agreed it was there on the famed Lenox Globe. What were the words that White wrote? Those three provocative words convey that these areas were at best unexplored and at worst perilous. One more quote from Robinson Meyer, who writing for TheAtlantic.com says, those famous words served as a warning to the map's original users and a kind of flourish from the map's artisan makers. To us, they seem to comment both on the travails of the terrain, we don't know what's here, and about the dangers of ignorance. There might as well be dragons in this unknown spot. So as you walk out of this sanctuary today, 
as you march out in the recessional tomorrow, just know that out there, eek, sunt, dragonis. <laughs> there be dragons. So what to say? I want to take you to a psalm. A psalm from the ancient hymn book of Israel. It's Psalm 27. But before I read you the psalm, I want to take a moment to set the terrain just a bit so that as we read through the psalm, it will make more sense. It has three basic sections. You will notice that the psalmist opens with great confidence. No fear here. The Lord is my light. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my strength. Who can cause me to fear? And he follows in that fashion for the coming verses. It's, it's a section of strength and confidence. God has been with me. I don't care what's out there. I've got it. But then after verse 6, the mood shifts. The feeling changes. In fact, it is such a dramatic change that some scholars, as they study this psalm, say, this must have been two psalms to begin with, and some ancient scribe joined them together. But other scholars say, no, the language and all that is within the psalm ties it together. There is just a shift in feeling. So what's the feeling of the second part? This feeling is much more tentative. Now the psalmist begins to pray. Coming from that great confidence, now the psalmist is praying, Oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. Please don't forget me. Even if my parents forget me, you don't forget me. Please. It's very tentative. And then the final two verses form the third part. Brief, but reflective and meditative. A call upon the reader of the psalm, along with he himself, to wait on the Lord. So with that in place, knowing what the terrain is, let's read Psalm 27. Starting with verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At His tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Now a shift. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says if you seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. And one final shift. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. As I studied this psalm this week, it struck me. It's almost as though the psalmist has donned academic regalia and slipped into the line unrecognized back there and marched down with the processional music and is now sitting somewhere in the, uh, in the pews. He's had these accomplishments. And so he starts out thinking as you think over the recent two or three or four years and all of the accomplishments. You're here. You did it. With all of the challenges, the late nights, the rigorous academic papers, the tests, everything that you've gone through, but you've made it. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
He's thinking that, and maybe you're thinking that. But then the service ends. The recessional music plays. You file down the aisle along with the psalmist, and you see a little sign that says, Ic sunt dragones. And the psalm has changed, and maybe you will as well. Oh, Lord, be with me. You start to think. He starts to think, oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? I, I, I've got a student loan debt the size of the GDP of a small country. Where's Robert Smith when I need him? <laughs> you begin to think, I've got to get a job. I, I've got to pass boards. What if I don't pass the upcoming sitting of the boards? Then what am I going to do? Oh, God, please don't forget me. And my parents, they'll forget me when it comes to my student loan debt, but you, Lord, please don't forget me. <laughs> and he walks away from this service pleading for the presence of God. You get back to your room. He gets back to his room, begins to pack belongings for the upcoming move and now with a mixture of celebration and reflection joy and apprehension he says but I believe I will see the Lord in the land of the living so just wait patiently my soul wait for the Lord that's Psalm 27 you see, the psalmist's experience is yours. Your experience is his. It's the entire experience of life. The confidence and the fear. The waiting on the Lord. But in the context of that psalm, I want to point you back to one verse. I want to reread this verse. It's the very first verse of Psalm 27. Because here in this verse, in Psalm 27, 1, the psalmist points us to three affirmations that will guide us through the entire experience and may be able to guide you. So Psalm 27, 1, once more, says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Three affirmations. First of all, he says, the Lord is my light. The Lord can be your light. This is the only place in the Old Testament Scriptures when in speaking of God, he is spoken of as my light. In a dark world, in a dark time, in a dark place, it's an affirmation that you are not alone. The darkness creates fear to some level in many people, if not most of us, and terror in some. I read, read of a little boy afraid of the dark. Little Johnny was afraid to go outside at night. One evening, it was dark outside. Mom was working in the kitchen. She said, Johnny, hand me the broom. It's out in the patio. He said, but it's dark out there, Mommy. I know it's dark, but just get... Mommy, it's dark out there. She said, Jesus is out there. He'll be with you. I read that Johnny went to the door and cracked it open and looked out and said... Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, are you out there? If you are, please hand me the broom. <laughs> <laughs> there are some experiences in, in life where that could have been me. Frightened because of the darkness that descends upon every life at some point in time. A darkness as you move through that experience of Psalm 27 at times will come in the days ahead. But when it comes, never forget the affirmation the psalmist makes, the Lord is my light. He makes a second affirmation. Not only the Lord is my light, but secondly, the Lord is my salvation. The Lord can be your salvation for any of those experiences in life where you feel lost, 
emotionally lost, professionally lost, spiritually lost, where there is uncertainty as to where to turn, where to go, what fork in the road to take, the affirmation of the psalmist is strong. The Lord is my salvation. It was Officer Aaron Hoopi. Aaron Hoopi, who was there that day not far from the Pentagon, the day that jet hurtled explosively into the Pentagon. The fire raged. The responders came as quickly as they could. But Hoopi thought, I've got to do something. And so with no mask, with no fire jacket, without even a handkerchief with which to cover his mouth, he raced toward to go into the building to the shouts and the cries behind him, Stop! Don't go in there! But hope, he said to himself, there are people in there. I have to help. He went into that dark, cavernous space, and he began to cry out, is anybody in here? Is anybody in here? Choking smoke. Wayne Sinclair and five of his coworkers were there. In the explosion and in the aftermath, they had totally lost any sense of direction. But now they begin to cry out, we're here, we're here. And Hoopi just kept shouting to them, come to my voice, come to the sound of my voice, come to the sound of my voice. And slowly but surely, these who very likely would have perished, found the way to life and salvation by the voice. Here in the psalm, the psalmist says, the Lord is my salvation. That same Lord of whom the psalmist speaks here in the Old Testament will speak in the New Testament and will say, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. There will be days ahead when the dragons of lostness will threaten you, will surround you, will threaten to cut you off from any sense of hope and a future. When they do, follow the voice. The Lord is my salvation. Three affirmations he makes. For a world about which it can be said, Ic sunt dragones, there be dragons. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. And then he says, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. The stronghold. Put him in his world, and it makes great sense. In the world in which the psalmist lived and wrote, To get inside of a walled city meant protection. To get inside of a fortress or a stronghold was about as secure as one could be. Here in the psalm, he is writing to people, no doubt, who have felt fear, writing to those situations when he himself has felt fear, has needed protection. And he makes the affirmation, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. The Lord can be the stronghold of your life. But we have to understand clearly, candidly, what that means. We want it to mean physical protection. For reasons known only to God, on occasions it does, but not always. In fact, a missionary from the Southern Baptist Missionary Alliance, Lynetta Thompson tells of people asking her. She was working in a country where there was great threat. She was returning, and she noted that people kept saying things to her like, you're really going to have to depend on the protection of God. That's the only way you can go there. I would never go there. Having been a missionary before, finally Thompson spoke up, and she said, you know what? I could take you to the grave of a 15-year-old child of missionaries dead from hepatitis. I could take you to the grave of a 4-year-old child of missionaries dead from malaria. 
If I were going dependent on the protection of God for my physical well-being, I wouldn't go. But what I do is surrender my life to his care and keeping and know that I have his spiritual care and his eternal protection. That's true to Scripture. It can be a paradoxical reality, a paradoxical reality underlined by the great late A.W. Tozer, died back in the early 1960s, but penned many profound words. None may be more profound than these. Tozer wrote, A real Christian is an odd number anyway. He feels supreme for one whom he has never seen, talks familiarly every day to someone he cannot see, expects to go to heaven on the virtue of another, empties himself in order to be full, admits he is wrong so he can be declared right, goes down in order to get up, is strongest when he is weakest, richest when he is poorest, happiest when he feels worst, he dies so he can live, forsakes in order to have, gives away so he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, and knows that which passeth knowledge. The paradoxical realities of the disciple world of Jesus. So when the psalmist says, the Lord is the stronghold of my life, you must understand that he has you in the grip of his grace, that your eternity is secure with him. But you may have to depend on his presence and promise when the dragons threaten doesn't promise that without fail here. So you stand on the verge of the next phase of your life. No doubt some uncertainty, some recognition that at times the world can be dark and lost and dangerous. And yet the psalmist speaks to you. He speaks to you and says, despite the facts that there are dragons, we have a God a God who in your darkness can be your light, in your lostness can be your salvation, in your peril can be the stronghold to whom you run. You know, I read. I read that there were other images on maps in the ancient world. That not only were there those maps or those globes where the cartographer had traced the outlines of a dragon, but there were maps with another image. For example, the Psalter map of the 1500s, called the Psalter map because it was printed into the Psalms, has another image right at the top of the map. And that image, well, in order to capture the strength of that image, I have to tell you about a man named Larry Bird. Larry Bird is a name familiar even to those who may not be basketball fans. One of the greats who played the game of basketball, who upon his retirement ceremony in the Boston Garden, had his coach, Casey Jones, tell a story about Bird. Coach Jones told of one of those games where the game was on the line, things were tense, they had called a timeout, and the team was huddled around the coach. Jones said, I had diagrammed a play that we were going to run. And as soon as I finished, Larry said to me, just give me the ball and get everyone out of the way. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, I'm the coach. I call the plays. And then I looked back at the team and I said, just give Larry the ball and get out of the way. <laughs> that image at the top of the map. On the Psalter map, with the dragons drawn all across the bottom, your Lord, Christ, Christus Imperator, your light, your salvation, your stronghold. So it might not be a bad idea to get certain things like ego and selfishness and self-protection out of the way and just turn your life over to Jesus. Because 
When you do that and stay out of his way, of whom? Of whom? Of whom are you going to be afraid? We had a very wet winter and late spring here in Southern California, leading to a super bloom of poppies and lupins out in the desert. And so when Judy and I headed out early this morning to hike up Pisgah Peak, we knew we would find a bountiful crop of wildflowers. White, yellow, red Indian paintbrush, pink, blue, purple, and it reminded me of the beauty of you guys, the diversity of our graduates, the potential that you represent. Now, admittedly, there's a few patches of wild oats among those flowers. <laughs> As we moved on up, we passed the choke cherries that had set heavily this year, promising a feast for the bears this summer. And finally, we reached the top and looked out across the valley with the sun at our backs to see a sea of white, the marine layer entirely covering the Inland Empire. The look at that, Randy, covering what kind of dragons? What is out there? We're proud of what you've done. It's been a blessing to have you on our campus. Thank you to those who presented this morning. Particularly, Stacy, thank you for representing our newest group, our San Manuel Gateway College students, who are part of this graduation today. It's special to have graduates of a university like this, the relationships that develop, all the things that happen during the experiences on this campus. We grow because of you. Thank you. May God bless you as you bloom as the fog burns off, as your life flourishes. Please stand with me now for our prayer of dedication. Our gracious Father in heaven, over the past few years, these graduates have spent time on this campus, have gone on mission trips, have penetrated the community, have studied, have passed tests, have dialogued, have developed relationships. And now the time has come, Father, when they move on, when they move out into a world of uncertainty, a world that seems more polarized day by day, as beacons of hope, as professionals bringing stability, understanding, and wisdom. Bless each one of them, Father. Hold them close. Carry them in your arms as they walk through this world. You know the challenges they will face. You know the dragons that are out there. And yet we also believe that you honor and recognize your children and will keep them close. Thank you for being with us today through the years past. And I'll bless you as you travel on your way. We pray in your name. Amen. Will the audience please be seated while the graduates and faculty prepare for the recessional.
Hello, everybody. Glad to be with you again. And got to let you know, you're going to have to listen fast today. We got lots of names and a couple that I'm going to greet again because I didn't get you just right last week. I apologize. First up, I want to wish Helen Kinzer a very happy birthday, 90th birthday. Sorry I didn't get you right last week. And Jody Rogers, bless your heart. I did get to see you last week, but I didn't get Ellis's name right. So here I am to say happy birthday, Jody. And Ben and Connie Gish up in Collie's Place, Washington, are marking their 40th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to you two. Always glad to be where you are. Hello, Richard, Dick, and Jeannie Sample. So glad to see you Sabbath after Sabbath here at Loma Linda. And each of you has a birthday this month and I'm here to congratulate you both. Hello, Jim Manning. What a privilege to see you just last Sabbath. And I'm here to let you know, I appreciate you, good friend, and wish you the very best for your birthday. Hello, Grant and Artis McPherson, up there in Shelton, Washington. Glad you got your roots down, and I'm here to wish you two a very happy 49th wedding anniversary. I hope I'm right. Congratulations. Ron and Polly Westman, Sarasota, Florida. Wow, what a beautiful place you live over there. And you are marking your 55th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Hi, Bob and Molly Weaver. So glad to have you as dear friends. And Betsy and I enjoyed being with you recently. And I'm here to say happy 61st wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Hello, Bob and Mary Jo Dom over there in Lancaster, Massachusetts. And I was glad to learn it's your anniversary this month as well. And I wish you two the very, very best. Doug and Carmen Clark, Poles Bowl, Washington. What can I say? Wonderful memories because I got to stand up with you 51 years ago in Springfield, Oregon. Congratulations on your 51st anniversary. Jenny Grzynski, Fall Creek, Oregon. So glad to be told it's your birthday, Jenny, and I'm here to wish you a very, very enjoyable experience. Richard and Norma Osborne, again, good friends for a long, long time. Glad to see you from time to time. And now to congratulate you on your 50th wedding anniversary. All the very best to you two. Hello, Carol Halverson. It's been too long since we've seen you, but glad to know it's your birthday right about now. And I'm here to say congratulations, Carol. Hello, Linda Levison. I'm so glad we've had time together during this last year. And now to know it's your birthday, Linda, and I want to give you a shout out, warm congratulations. Bert and Evelyn Connell, what can I say? Wow, glad to run into you anytime, anywhere, miss you around Loma Linda, but here I am to say happy 51st wedding anniversary to two dear friends. Hello, Stacy, Stacy Belliard, and Juan. So glad it's your birthday, Stacy, and I'm here to say happy day. Kirk Campbell, wow. You and your girls are an important part of our church, Shauna's ministry, your leadership at the church board. Happy birthday, Kirk. Dottie and Ray Frank, back there in Mansfield, Pennsylvania. So glad to be in touch with you, Dottie, this week and to know you're marking your 62nd wedding anniversary. Warmest congratulations. Hello, Clarence Brummett traveling friend, good brother. Glad to know it's your birthday, your 80th birthday, Clarence. Congratulations. Bob and Sylvia Sprode. Wow. There are lots of anniversaries right about now, and you two are marking your 61st wedding anniversary. Best congratulations. Always glad to see you whenever we can. George and Jeannie Wiseman. 
right here in Loma Linda. Bless your hearts. I'm glad to see you from time to time. And to know now it's your 76th wedding anniversary, warmest congratulations to two very special people. Larry Gutman, bless your heart, man. Thanks for keeping in touch with me and letting me know about birthdays in your family and your birthday too, your 70th, right about now. Warmest congratulations. Hello, Christine Cassidy and Jeff Cassidy. Always glad to see you folks here at Loma Linda University Church. And now to know you've got birthdays about the same time and I wish you both the very, very best. Hi, Bev Benson. Wow. We have history too, don't we? And I'm just glad to know it's your birthday, Bev. You're in Arizona now, I think, and I wish you the very best greetings. Tammy Rubio, right here at Loma Linda. Hi, Tammy. Always glad to see you and get a hug and to know that you are about the special ministry you have here at University Church. David Taylor. Yes, we go back a long ways, man. Seminary days, actually. And I'm glad to know it's your birthday, Dave. Wish you the very best, man. David and Aletha Natiuk. So glad to see you folks not so long ago and enjoy your son's music at Walla Walla. And here I am to wish you a very happy 23rd wedding anniversary. Enrique, Enrique Rammer is right here, the maintenance staff at University Church. You are so important to all of us and I want everybody to know it's your birthday, Enrique. Happy birthday, man. Hello, Edwin V. Meister. Glad to see you, sir, from time to time, and now to know it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Edwin. Roger Heinrich, another one of my longtime friends. Roger, glad to run into you Sabbath by Sabbath here at Loma Linda, and now to be told it's Roger's birthday. Happy birthday, Roger. Loretta Freeze, right here in Loma Linda. Hello, Loretta. Glad to be reminded of you and your birthday and to see you there with Edward. Peggy Liebel. Yes, we have history from the Media Center and Pacific Union office. Happy birthday, Peggy. And a shout out to Lance as well. Hello, Bill Johnson. Good friend, faithful leader, author. Always glad to be with you here in our church. At Loma Linda, happy birthday, Bill. Sylvia Davis, one of my sisters. Hi, Sylvia. Glad to know it's your birthday, and I'm here to wish you the very, very best. And that goes for all of us for the coming week. Mm -hmm.